VI Podcasters Making Strides, 1,000 Job in 1,000 Days has officially been launched and the UK Guarantee Loan Consultation. Hire BVI to host back to school fun day. The Amazon is burning at a record rate and West End Police Station officially reopened. These and more stories when Tweet for News returns. Yes, BVI, this is your singer, Taurus Riley, T4000. Sing it, sing it, sing it, Kravitz. And you're watching 284 Media. Not respect. Why are you really running for a boss? You could have bust a hole in your head. But well, see with the competition. It's mean about to bust a hole in your pocket. I could get my modem, please. Anyhow, I got something huge to show you. Eh? You gotta be sick in your head. The whole on string bean. Tena kind of party. Check this. That's LTE1 for just about everyone. LTE2 for you and your book. And hold on. Bam! Red solo, you feel like you're free. That's LTE3 for you and the whole family. Save even more on your internet with new pricing from CCT. Get LTE2 now for only $149. Get LTE3 for the new low price of $189. All packages are unlimited, so there's no overage charge. You don't have to run into chats for savings. Just stop by our store and sign up today. Come on over to CCT. Life unlimited. Welcome everybody. It is Friday, August 23rd, 2019. I'm Ron Grant. And I'm Javon Wilson. Tis the season for back to school and lots going on and as students and parents get prepared for their loved ones to go back to school. And of course, Javon, the weekend is finally here. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Topping our newscast today, in a day and age where millennials are making leaps and bounds in various facets of their community, whether it be business, music, politics, or otherwise, two young Virgin Islanders are also making their mark and sharing their craft with the world, this time through the exciting world of podcasting. Yes. Podcasting is an episodic series of digital audio or video files which our user can download to listen. Alternatively, podcast refers to the individual component of such a series or to an individual media file. They are the one and only Mr. Daylon M. Vantpool of Focus the Fire podcast, which provides essential career advice for young professionals, and the lovely Kyla Kanisha of Such a Girl podcast, recently launched, with, which seeks sorry, to empower, enlighten, and present a safe space for all to share their strengths, challenges, and of course, uh, giving solutions. Daylon Vantpool is a private banker from the British Virgin Islands. He spends most of his days advising high network clients or helping young professionals build more meaningful careers as host of Focus the Fire podcast. Over the past 15 years, school, work, and play allowed him to experience diverse cultures in the United States, South America, Latin America, and Europe. Since 2012, Daylon has been leading the Spot Jazz, a movement to advance music, poetry, and other performing arts in the Caribbean. As a musician, he specializes in saxophone with uh, training in theology and jazz. He is committed to helping young professionals build meaningful careers that would lead them uh, to more time and money as well as freedom. Yes. Now, Kyla Kinesha, who is has a passion for communications while being an advocate for social change and women empowerment within her community. Kyla is a regulatory cadet with the Final Financial Services Commission. She is responsible for spending time with each department or division of the Virgin Islands Financial Services Commission to gain an understand, uh, understanding of their job responsibilities, which in turn gives her the knowledge about the overall operations of the Financial Services Commission. Now, using communication as a means to influence positive changes in her community, she is the host of the radio program called Let's Be Real with uh, ZBBI, uh, 7080 AM every Saturday at 2 PM with her co-host, uh, Mr. Timothy Hughes. Uh, we all know him. The yes, radio program uh, was launched in July of 2016, and it is um, not always easy, Jovan, for persons within our community, and we can all both agree on yes. this. It's not always easy for persons to come out and put their talents and strengths mm -hmm. on the platform, but these are two Virgin Islanders who are doing a remarkable job at tapping into um, an area that isn't you know, as popular in our region, but it is still remarkable that they're sharing their creati creativity, uh, which conveys message to their peers that will help empower and lift each other up. So kudos to uh, both of them for an exceptional job. 
I love this story. Um, yes. I, I think as we reflect, we've seen technology go through several mm -hmm. stages. We had radio, we had television, we had the internet, yep. and then we see podcasts, which of course is a, a more recent intervention. But I think one of the better ones, simply because um, it's cost effective. Indeed. Um, it allows you, and it's highly engaging as mm -hmm. well, it really allows you to uh, or create an avenue for you to share and have meaningful conversations, like you said. So I'm really proud of Delon. We had the opportunity to, to interview him, him yes, right here at 284 Media. He's doing great things. And um, many of our uh, staff right here at 284 Media also had the privilege of being at the launch last night. Yes, uh, it was Kyla's an awesome, launch. awesome yes, event. Uh, you a saw girl. a lot of friends and family coming out and support. And just a great community spirit. Persons from all different walks of life. Yes, this is a millennial who's doing great things, but there were people there much older. Um, right. Yeah, so a, a mixed crowd, cross, definitely. Cross section, yeah. But it just reenacts, uh, reinforces the need for meaningful conversations, mm -hmm. the conversations we want to be having and ought to be having. Indeed. So kudos to Kyla as well as Delon. Moving right along, the $400 million loan guarantee strongly promises to aid in the recovery and development of the BVI, but according to the Premier, it won't be possible hmm. under the current terms and conditions. He refers to it as unconstitutional and stressed the need for urgent renegotiation. Now, firstly, in order for the UK to provide a loan guarantee needed, they are demanding almost full control of RDA's finances. Additionally, the current conditions are not favorable considering the current threats to our economy. As a result, the Premier put together a team under the leadership of Honorable Carvey Malone to investigate the recovery plan. So Ron, a few mm -hmm. things here. He's insisting that the financial protocol signed by the previous government, which was signed back in 2012, um, that would have been five years prior to the atrocities of 2017. He's hoping that they are uh, just adjusted, sorry, especially considering the economic reality that the hurricane puts us in. If not, he is worried that we will exceed the level set and possibly breach the loan guarantee. Wow. And two, Ron, he's also asking that the rules be relaxed and documented within the confines of the legislation overseeing the management of RDA. So it's one of two things here. Either we opt for a quick fix, uh, which is guaranteed by way of this loan, mm -hmm. but many persons are fearful that it might come with unfavorable and compromising conditions, or yeah. we decide on a slower fix, which seems to be a safer option uh, through the territory's own finances. But definitely we know for sure that this one will require great patience and sacrifice. Now, lest we forget, uh -huh. our walk to financial freedom was not an easy one. And while it is fair, yes, uh, for the UK to request inclusion in the management process, giving them this much control, I think, may contradict the financial freedom uh, stalwarts like the late Honorable Willard Wheatley fought for that resulted in the BVI being able to manage its own financial affairs as well as the territory uh, coming off of granted aid, mm -hmm. I think, in 1978. The Premier said the issue is we, uh, whether we are prepared to mortgage our board right in order for the British government to provide a guarantee needed for us to access this critically needed funding. The Premier also said while he acknowledges the UK's rightful effort to be cautious, not even the reckless mismanagement of the previous administration can justify the constitutional overreach that we are being asked to sanction and accept. Many residents also share the common sentiment that RDA is not necessarily, um, is not necessary, sorry, in order for us to rebuild. A lot of persons have instead requested that the government do a proper assessment of the necessary projects, Ron. Um, because I think one of the things uh, we've been back and forth on is which projects goes to the RDA and Correct. which which of the projects falls under the, the government's annual budget. There doesn't seem to be a, a precise and clear uh, distinction between the two. Right, and I think most persons are trying to ascertain that. Uh, so persons are asking that the government do that assessment and according to level of priority examine whether it should be funded via these loans, maybe smaller loans Correct. even, or strategically positioned into our budget. Well, this is no small matter, Jovan. Um, whether we do or we don't, um, it is going to seriously affect us here in the Virgin Islands. So I hope that uh, the FOIA administration, um, and you know, he's uh, outlined that the Honorable Carvin Malone is heading a team to really right. oversee. So, um, so I hope that they, they pay keen attention to the nitty gritties and continue to do as they are doing, which is uh, bring the platform to us, the community, so persons have an um, opportunity to engage and, and converse. So we'll, I know a lot of persons yeah. are grateful that the Premier yeah. uh, 
did bring the conversation to the public. With the public um, meetings. A lot of other persons have opined that, um, you know, just let the UK give us the loan and let's just rebuild. Um, but I don't think they understand uh, the, the specifics and, you know, the, the implications such a decision could have. Very it's very true. important that you fine tune the legislation that will oversee this project. Up next, West End Police Station officially reopened and officers give K9 presentation. And also, the Amazon is burning at a record rate. These and more stories when Tweet for News returns. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Do do tracks of my tears. Hey guys, we are the 3 Gs, and you're watching 284 Media. 284 Media. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. The newly refurbished West End Police Station was recently officially reopened. The station was damaged extensively during Hurricanes Irma and Maria in 2017. The refurbishing of the West End Police Station was done by Quality Construction Limited and will also house officers of Her Majesty's Customs and Immigration Department. In his address to the eager audience, His Excellency the Governor Augustus Jasper praised and thanked the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force officers for their dedication and commitment during the hardest days after the hurricanes and continuing to police the community since then and despite the challenges of the damaged infrastructure. He was delighted that the repaired station would be open for its first shift from the midnight that night and he also stated in his remarks the first responsibility of any government is the safety and security of its citizens. A good governance, the rule of law and feeling safe and secure allows communities to flourish, businesses to develop and children and young people to be educated and grow up seizing positive opportunities. I could not agree with him more. Right. Uh, those are uh, powerful statements and very true. Mm -hmm. With the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force uh, estate sustaining significant damage during the 2017 hurricanes, securing the reconstruction of police station has been a priority of the governor. The governor was extremely grateful for the donation from the government of the United Kingdom to fund the repairs to the West End Police Station. Now the station was repaired with UK funds, part of approximately 1.5 million of UK funds secured by the office of the governor to repair the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force stations across the territory and the rehabilitated station is an excellent example of the role that the governor himself I think plays in ensuring that the UK listens to and supports the priorities of the territory and its people and that there is a close partnership very close partnership uh, that's what we should be aiming between the UK and the government of the Virgin Islands in addressing these priorities now of course Commissioner Matthews expressed uh, the privilege to be standing with the most senior leadership in the British Virgin Islands he recalled what the officers had to endure after the hurricanes especially before the support from the UK soldiers and officers and officers from the uh, other OT uh, countries arrived. He touched on the fact that most of the officers lost simple stuff like their kits and uniforms during the hurricanes and this could have been perhaps this is his uh, reasoning for some people saying why they could not see the officers or the officers weren't visible in the aftermath of the storms. He recalled his first visit to the West End Police Station and observed a young officer who was performing his duties without any boots on his feet because he had lost everything but he hadn't lost his ability to police and he hadn't um, deserted his post. Uh, Cop Matthews recounted, he expressed the pride that he felt knowing that even after losing everything, the officers still executed their duties because that is what policing is about. Uh, now in the same Brett Jovan, and, and this is a, a testament to uh, perseverance. Sometimes we see persons in a, in a different role right. um, and we feel like they for some reason are immune to mm -hmm. uh, the effects of whether a storm or just life in general. Uh, but these are persons who are still coming out and supporting us and trying their best uh, with what they have to make sure that our communities are safe. Yes, it, it requires a, a high level of mm -hmm. selflessness. Um, the police really did a remarkable yes. job during that time. And like, like the commissioner rightfully said, they were essentially forced to work and deplorable conditions and nevertheless push through to continue. I, I really like that. Indeed. Now, officers of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force gave a canine demonstration to children attending the Vacation Bible School at the New Testament 
Church of God International Worship Center on Thursday, uh, the 15th of August. Now, the children got to see officers at work in finding prohibited items, protecting its handler, and obeying simple commands like sit and stay. They even got to play with the officer, Patty. Um, now, they learned that there are many types of dogs, and they are used for police service, and that there are many crimes that these dogs can be used to detect and solve. I think it's a great opportunity where we're bringing this... Uh, level of interaction to our students so they get a better understanding yes. of the roles because um, officers as, as uh, my story just rightfully said officer patty the dog you know is an <laughs> officer because they're you know executing duties so okay. i think it's great for uh, mm -hmm. the community the to be able to see that yeah absolutely. three officers of the royal virgin Islands police force are currently undergoing a basic canine handler training that would train the new officers in the area of canine handling the training which commenced on monday uh, the august 12th and will conclude on Friday, August 23rd, is being conducted by Paris Nicholson uh, for K-9 Pipeline Training Academy, LLC. So we got to continue the great work and in training around. our officers. Yeah. Yes, 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 I agree with you. And outside of that, another uh, takeaway from this story is the relationship, like you said, between the UK and the British Virgin Islands. Correct. It really cements their commitment uh, to developing the British Virgin Islands. And I know in, in addition to the, the monies received from the UK, mm -hmm. um, the government also um, assigned a hefty contribution to the police force for their yes. repairs and of course, overall development of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. So kudos to them. Moving right along, thousands of fires are ravaging the Amazon forest in Brazil, and experts have now said wow. that this is the most intense blaze for almost a decade. It is so bad that on Monday, August 19th, the city of San Paulo, located just 2,700 kilometers away, was completely blacked out by smoke during the day. Mm. Now, Brazil has seen a record number of fires in 2019. The National Institute for Space Research says its satellite data shows an 85% increase on the same period in 2018. The official figures show more than 75,000 were recorded wow. in Brazil just in the first eight months of the year, the highest number since 2013. That compares with 40,000 in the same period of 2018. Now, additional, additionally, sorry, as of yesterday's August 22nd, we can see a record of 2,500 fires, Ron, wow. burning at the same time <laughs> um, simultaneously. Um, soon enough, you'll be seeing the picture on our screen. Those red spots, those are all fires. The fires are emit emitting large amounts of smoke and carbon dioxide, That's which crazy. is very toxic. And these emissions have spread across the region. It's tough to digest because, you know, we all know the forest is very necessary um, to... to uh, absorb the yes, carbon that correct. is being given off. So this is really a global crisis. Now get this, one-tenth of the world's known species uh, live in those rainforests. The Amazon is also known as the lungs of the planet with 20% of the Earth's oxygen being produced there. And to add to that, mm -hmm. the Amazon is also home to 1 million indigenous and 3 million indigenous people and 3 million plants and animals. The indigenous people, uh, Ron, ever since this tragedy mm -hmm. have been speaking out very openly and have said that this happened in the name of capitalism. One woman said that they have been fighting for almost two years to preserve the nature reserves, but their efforts against the government has proven futile. She said, they killed our rivers, hmm. they killed our sources of life, and now they set out to kill, uh, kill our reserves. She said they will block the roads and protest. Now let's just take a look at what's happening for those of you who have not seen the videos as, as yet.
clearly a lot of devastation happening Indeed. in Brazil, and I could imagine how much the indigenous people, especially what how they frightened through? they are. Yeah. And you know, this is their livelihood. This is where they reside. It's a tough and situation. It definitely is. And as of yesterday, which is August 22nd, the president of Brazil has since said, and I quote, Regarding the fires in the Amazon, I am under the impression that it could have been set by the NGOs because they had asked for money. What was their intention, he said, and he said that was to bring problems for Brazil. The NGOs, however, have labeled this as a smokescreen, saying increased deforestation and burning are a result of the president's anti-environmental policies. However, the Amazon Environmental Research Institute has stated the recent increase in the number of fires in the Amazon is directly related to deliberate deforestation. So in this case, the indigenous people just Correct. might be right. Uh, viewers, our prayers are with Brazil at this time. Uh, we just want you to continue to keep them in thoughts uh, because this is indeed a global crisis. And still ahead, hundreds line up for the 1,000 Jobs Initiative, and Hire BVI is hosting their annual Back to School Fund Day. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. You're watching To It For News. Hello? Wait, you had a lunch, I care. You said you were sick? What happened to all rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I'll see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching 284 News. Higher BVI is at it yet again. This time around, they are hosting their annual Back to School Fun Day, and that is tomorrow, Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the No Lloyd Positive Action Movement Park. The family-oriented event, themed The Time Is Now, promises to be a fun-filled entertainment uh, day for both the adults as well as students. Uh, we caught up with Rokima Turnbull, the young entrepreneur behind all this magic, and she has a personal invite for you. Listen in. As the local employment agency in the BVA, we are aware that many parents are still unemployed, especially following Hurricane Oma and Maria. Therefore, Higher BVA has taken on the corporate responsibility to provide assistance accordingly. We are encouraging all to attend early in order to fully benefit from this event. Now, Ron, this is another great instance where we really see corporate Indeed. BVI stepping up. stepping up to the mandate. And like Ms. Turnbull rightfully said, many parents in the BVI are really still faced with a lot of financial I challenges, agree. I agree. especially post Irma. Um, so it is really refreshing to see the private sector doing their part. Uh, parents, you are encouraged to bring out the kids since hundreds of school bags will be given away. Of course, school bags with school supplies, uh, a lot of those will be distributed. Be Partner for Kids, who provides first-rate pediatric and adults and primary care services, are also on board and will be offering free health screening. It doesn't stop there. Free haircuts. Wow as well as free hair styling for students, and many uh, after school as well as, uh, sorry, as, well as children-focused programs will be present, uh, conducting registration and distributing information. Plus, the kids get to indulge, indulge, indulge. There's bouncy castles, <laughs> uh, face painting, Jenga, Plinko with entertainment being provided, of course, by DJ Mars and ABM. It's yes, a lot of entertainment uh, yep, there, yep, Ron. Yep, hi, yeah, they're we doing probably it. should pop back. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, a lot of great things happening. Of course, drinks will be on sale. Hire BVI, for those of you who do not know, is a really great employment uh, company that connects job seekers to BVI jobs or recruiters. They assist with a wide range of human services, uh, human resources services, such as recruitment, payroll, uh, tax filing, work permits, visa, passport, and so on. So just a few months ago as well, Ron, we could remember... The Career Expo, the that career was Expo quite a success. The Career Expo was amazing. Yeah. Uh, of course, fully embraced by corporate BVI as well as the government, mm -hmm. um, where kids had the opportunity and they were privy to all the job opportunities that are available to them right here in the, in the Virgin Islands. Um, and that's highly 
uh, successful. You know what I like about this, Jovan? This high BAI is just one organization. So imagine if one organization is making such an impact yes. um, with as it pertains to um, human resources and, and careers, I think um, more of corporate BVI, if they were to come on board, this would be a significant contribution to the territory. But I, I noticed this time around, this school year, we've seen an influx of back-to-school activities and yes. back-to-school packets like never before. Absolutely. Um, so persons a lot of in corporate the BVI, yeah, really as well as even members of the government are yep. stepping up uh, individually. And just in general, persons in public are trying to assist in whatever ways yep. they can. It's very important uh, because a lot of persons really Really just cannot afford it. And they need the assistance. Um, yeah, so just a few months ago, they pulled out the career, career exposition, and it was really well received by everyone. Uh, if you want, you can go visit their website at www.hirebvi.com for more information. Good stuff. And speaking of back to school and careers, the highly anticipated and large employment initiative by the FOI administration has finally been launched. 1,000 Jobs in 1,000 Days was officially uh, launched on Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. The event saw more than 200 persons of all ages attending the launch and used the opportunity to sign up for possible employment with several employers who have committed to the program. Premier FOI began his remarks boldly saying, um, you know, he got the feeling that a lot of people believe that the initiative is another political gimmick and that they would not be able to land jobs. This is what he said. I want to assure you that this will not be a show, stated the Premier, adding that a weekly report will be collected from the Department of Labor and Workforce Development. Because we are extremely serious about making sure that each and every Virgin Islander and belonger that is not working, that has a passion to work, and desire to work to improve themselves get that opportunity. The Premier urged every public servant and a business owner involved to take the initiative seriously so the program can be effective. He further stated, what is the point if there is wealth and prosperity flowing all around you but our people, our Virgin Islanders are on the breadline and living on crumbs. Minister of Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, the Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, who was quite excited himself. Um, you could have sensed his enthusiasm yes. as he opened um, the <laughs> The ceremony. Mm -hmm. He said that uh, the same sentiments, he's aware of some sentiments that there's a perception that Virgin Islanders and belongers are not being treated fairly in the job market and that the program launch is a direct response by government to address this concern. The 1,000 day initiative is equivalent to about two uh, years and seven months on a periodic basis. The government will be sensitizing persons and encouraging persons to register with the program. Uh, quite another great opportunity and initiative, a big one. It's, it's a large initiative. Um, and again, like the Premier said, I think perhaps a lot of persons might not have had much faith in it, uh, but they are making an effort and we're going to see how far it goes. Most importantly, I hope that a lot of the young people, you should see, we were there, Jovan, you should see I all the I was just people. about to yeah. tell you that. The atmosphere was just uh, filled with a sense yeah. of hope and, and just very positive. People were really optimistic. Mm -hmm. And like you said, a lot of young people, and it really goes to show that, uh, yes, there might be a good chunk of people um, not employed or right. underemployed, but they're looking for the opportunities and they're um, honor up before I was being the champion of that cause. Indeed. What I also love additionally about this uh, initiative is the fact that um, it's not just for you know placing persons, it's also about qualifying them for the job. Correct. So um, the Premier also said that some establishments he will be working along with certain companies mm -hmm. to ensure that they provide the relevant uh, training that is necessary to accomplish these jobs. And that's something that's very um, important, very important for the industry. Viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to like us on Facebook at 284 Media as well as 284BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. I'm Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. Be sure to like us or join us, sorry, every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on 284 News. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. Take care. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join a prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with Hero Bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Eh? You, you never put up a fight, no. Paradise Plum. Yeah, this is Naomi Cowan representing for 284 Media. Keep it locked and don't go anywhere. Stay sweet.
So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it would read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals.